Okay, so what we are going to do now is to um, is to design some of these API for our example, hmm? for our exams example, and then implement them in Express, at least starting to implement them in Express. So let's start with the first one. Uh, do you see over there? Okay, so I was saying let's design some of these and then implement some of these in Express in the time that we have. So let's think of our React application of the exam are the functions to implement, to design these APIs. Mm -hmm. um, so we are not going to do, we can design even more than these APIs around exams, but let's focus on what we are going to need for React first. So for sure we need an API to getting all the exams, right? We need to fill that table out. So URL. Which is the URL for listing all the exams? Exams? All. all. Exams is better. Because we need to, we would like to focus on the concrete norm of the collection that is exams. Good. And it's plural because there are many. HTTP method? Get. Description. Get all the exams um, that to the student already passed. Uh, request body. Do we have a request body? No. So no request body. Response. Uh, response mean not response body, but response. So HTTP status code. Okay, 200, maybe, I mean, yes. 200 in case of success, and if not, <clears throat> No, because 200 is okay, I got all the exams, I get back all the exams, 200, okay. And in case of not success? Wait, okay. <laughs> okay, in case of an error, what we are going to give as a status code? Four hundred, five hundred. Who uh, we'll say uh, differently? Who we'll offers more? Can you repeat? Yeah, we don't have parameters here, we don't have, it's just exams, so it can probably only be 500 something. So we can say, uh, or uh, 500 internal server error. As status code, then we can provide a message error. So um, a generic error, let's say. So, response body. How do we appear the response body? Uh, 
a list of objects. Do you agree? Yes, JSON as a format for sure. That is, we, let's give this as, as an assumption. All of this will be JSON in request and in response. That's fine. A list of objects. So a list of objects. So let's write two of them. And then we are not going to give a full response body here, just an example of a response body. Just to, to give information to the developer that needs to call this API what, it ex can, what they can expect. Mm -hmm. So if they want to get all the exams, they as developers need to call a get on whatever it is slash exams and with no request body and they can expect to answer 200 or 500 and in case of 200 the expected response looks like this so that a front-end developer knows how is the structure of the JSON that he is, go or they is going to receive so they know how to handle it which are the fields how long is the object etc so in our case <clears throat> how this will appear which are the fields we have for exams the ID that we call the code if you remember because the core code um, that could be a string like 0 1 ABC right then name um, web application one then what we have before score before date credits like uh, six then we have score 30 why not and uh, then a date a uh, date uh, let's say 2022 0603 is not but uh, let's say that is and we if we look at the at the database we also have the loader so this is just to remind you, if you didn't check on Slack tonight, the last night, um, this is basically the exercise we did in week three with the database when we had SQLite. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the same exercise uh, with also the exam object like we had back then. We had also the exam list. In that moment, we don't need here the exam list, um, particularly. Uh, but this is the same exercise with, with the same get all exams that we had there, with same add exams we had back then. And I just added the update and the delete. But it's all queries on a database. We already had insert and select, select all. I just added the the update and delete that are very very close to the very very similar to the add actually so this is all, all of git already so in that moment we also add loader it is a pain but um, still we add it's a pain for us to have the loader because if we think about our react application we didn't have that there we didn't have a separate field we just score with everything inside. That means that we will have some um, things, extra work to do from getting this API into our React application. Um, so one choice we could, could say is, well, let's delete the loader, let's delete the column in the database and things will be simpler. That's one option we have. Uh, the other option is let's keep this Let's make things, things a little bit more complex because in real life, in real world, not in, in a course, 
you, you don't have often the control on the APIs you're going to use. Maybe you are developing the front end and somebody else is developing the API or already developed the APIs years ago. So it's not necessarily, uh, cannot necessarily happen that the two data's descriptions are equal. It may happen that the server give you information that you don't need, you don't want, or is are not in the format you need them. So this is uh, a complication that we are keeping, that I'm keeping, to also see what happens, what we can handle this not alignment between what we need in React and what the server provides. Because again, in React, we don't have the score and the load separate. We just have one. But it's fine. Uh, and then let's make another example here. Now, these are the fields, clearly. Um, so this could be uh, the EF02. The name could be, I don't know, how to pass exams. Why not having a, an exam, a course on how to pass the exam uh, with 18, false, and this was last year. Let's say September. 15. And then it continues. Hmm? We are not going to write them, all them, but it continues. Good. So if we look like this, we have a list of exams, the methods, the URL, the description, all the information we need with a sample of the request. Hmm? OK, so let me copy this, because we need to create other APIs. Which is the next one? With, with other APIs that we need. We need a list of exams. Then? We can get a single exam. So we don't really need in the React application because we have a table with all the exams. But it's a reasonable API to, to do. Let's keep it for after since we don't have a lot of time. We can have that, clearly. What else? Let's start from the easiest one. We, need, we will have delete, we will update, and we also need add. So let's start from add. But we are going to do all of them, clearly. Create a new exam. The URL will be? The same, because we are adding to a creation. So actually, even better. The URL could be API slash exams where API is the fixed part. Why? Because in a server, we can have some routes for the APIs and some routes for something else. So keeping this clear first. Uh, second, if the server is also providing the front end, that means that we cannot have exams as a URL in the front end. Because we can have two identical URLs if the server is the same, if the localhost something is the same. So we can differentiate a bit. So since these are APIs, we can prepend to all of these APIs, just to remind us and the others that these are just for APIs consumption. Since these are URL, it's not a problem. So this will be API slash exams, the method for create post, the description, is add a new past exam. Request body. Do we need a, re a request body? In this case, yes. Always a JSON object. And what we put in the object? Which information do we need to pass from the client to the server to create a new exam? Just 
these things here. So let's pick this. So actually, this is adding an entire resource. It's true. Uh, we can skip some of this information, right? For instance, the name and the credits. They will never change. Uh, our database, if you remember, has two tables, one for courses, one for exams. So these two things, if you already, are, already have a list of courses, are not really needed because these are proper for the course. We just need to update. But hmm? so if we open the database, and just to remember, we have the course table with the courses we have in our teaching load. And the score list, but just have the code, the score, whether there is a load or not, and the date. So when we create a new exam, we actually are going to add something here in this structure of the database and not something in courses, because that is the course that we are allowed to follow and that we are allowed to take an exam for. We, we cannot take an exam of a course that we don't have. So these two information, if we want, we can skip these two information. Because they are related to the course. It doesn't change. It doesn't identify uniquely the exam. Because it's the code that identifies that. So we are going to keep it or not? We are going to remove it? Yes. OK. Both way are fine. Mm -hmm. Keep it. Keep this information. We'll keep the entire resource. We add the entire resource. This, we are adding a partial resource because how the database is working. Mm -hmm. But it's, in this moment, it's more practical for sure. But it will be probably a little bit more appropriate to have the entire resource. But given how the database is working, in this specific case, is more uh, is, is a special case. So in the case of your movies, it will be easier because you just have maybe one table with all the movies. So no particular information to split. Uh, the response, which is the response? 201. That is created, if I remember properly, because we created an object. And in case of error, 500. 500? Entry. Uh, does it not internal server error? Uh, I don't remember what is 500. Entry. And it is the generic error. Uh, here, we can also have <laughs> unprocessable entity. Because here, we have a body. So if this body is not well formatted as strange information, doesn't respect constraint, like we're trying to add an exam for a course we don't have. For instance, that could be unprocessable entities, because it's not a proper entity. Unprocessable. Entity. Good. Response body. Why isn't it? It is five hundred and three. Ah, uh, five hundred exactly five hundred. Oh, because five hundred. So all the zero zero five hundred two hundred four hundred are the most generic errors. And then in that family, the other ones specialize that. So 500 is a generic internal server error. But in some cases, you have a specific 
message that specialize the generic internal server error. So in this case, we have one that is service unavailable, that is a specialization of 500, but still in the family 500. So here, 500 could be, so for this course at least, 500 could be fine as well, because it's the right, let's say, category, okay? Uh, we say response body? No response body, because it's a post. Good, done. Let me copy this again. And we are going to update an exam, right? URL. Slash exam code. And we can use this notation to say this is actually a parameter. This is something that change, hmm? for instance. Because these, we use the column. The column is more, you know, it's, it's what we have in JavaScript, in Express. But this is just a document, so we can use whatever notation we, we find reasonable. Mm. Um, and we can also, if you want, provide an example here. Mm. So we can say example uh, slash uh, 01 ABC, for instance just to specify what is this. Uh, maybe we can put it closer to the request body. Uh, method, put. Uh, description, update some information of an past exam, of an exam. Uh, uh, body, the same. Mm. Maybe we don't need to update all of them, maybe just one of them, but we, in this moment, as an example, we can keep the entire thing. Uh, response, two hundred. Let's, let's keep 200, this is just okay, just in case we, we don't remember the others. And uh, we still need 503, and we can have still unprocessable entities because the content could be wrongly formatted. Response body? Response body? Still none, good. And finally, for now, at least what we need now delete URL which is the URL for delete the same the method incredibly delete the description uh, is delete an exam. The example could be the same. Request body. No. We just need the code. We already have the code. So none. Responses. We can. We can have five hundred four if you want. And we can keep the five oh three and we can have a four oh four for the success. Just as an example, okay? Then we can also add the get a single exam if we want, but it's basically the same thing as the, the, first, the first API, no? the get all, but just with a code. 
in which the response body will be smaller, just the exam. Okay? So these are the APIs that we need. And this document, so if you are going to describe APIs, you can follow the same structure. We, you will be asked to, I think. Yeah, you will be asked to in the Big Lab too. And also the exam to describe their APIs that you are creating. So you can follow the same structure. Title, URL, methods, brief description, example of the request body, example of the response body, any status that your server is going to provide back. So here is designing. So you're thinking what you want to do. If it's success, we wrote that for this create, we're going to send a 201. So we, we, we should be sure that our code will send a 201. And if it is an error, we should either send a 503 or a 522. And if our code will not send that, we should update the documentation, design specification of this, this API to say no. We are not sending a 503, we are sending whatever it is. Because we, okay, you say in your mind, because we change my mind, because it's, it's better not to use that, to use another thing, but here it needs to be updated as well. Hmm? So we have these documents. Now we can create the server. Hmm? So let's create a new file. Uh, let me call it server.js. And let me open a terminal. So this project, uh, if you look in the package of JSON, just have SQLite and DJS as dependencies. So we need to install everything else that we need. Mm. So what we need? Express, then? Uh, Node mode, but we'll, let's install it globally, if I didn't, and? We need Morgan for login. And maybe the validator, but we can install it after. So let's start these two that are the, the fundamental piece. Then while it's installing, we start writing. What we should write as a first line, not JS. Very good. Then, so let's build the structure of Express. So we need const Express require Express. Then we can do the same things for Morgan, the login. Const Morgan require Morgan. Um, let me install uh, Nodemon. Okay. And let me open a browser since we are here. Dan, do you remember what we need for Express? We need to init Express, const app equal Express, right? And then we can also define the port here, and we can use the 3001. Since React uses 3000, we can use the 2001. Hmm? Because at a certain point, we're going to have both server running, the React one and this one. So better to start already with the right port. Then, Yeah, app.listen is on the bottom, but we can add it. Yes, app.listen. Uh, app.listen wants the port. 
and an arrow function to specify what happens when the server is started successfully. So console.log, um, we can write, oh, we can write server started on port so that we remember which is the port. Or better, at HTTP localhost port. So that again, we also have the address of the of the server that in this case will be localhost. Okay. Now in the middle. between init and activate. So let's say APIs. But before APIs, what do we need to do before APIs? Set up the middlewares. Which middlewares? Morgan. So app.use. Morgan, you see we have a few of them, combined, common, dev, short, tiny, etc. And we pick dev. For having logging. And then app.use, what we need? Express.json. That is? For exactly. Okay. Now we can have the APIs. So right now let's keep everything in one file. We can split this in multiple files if you want in Express, but we are just having four APIs at, at most, so it's, it's also reasonable to keep it in one file for the moment. So which is the first API we're going to do? Let's go in order. Get all exams. Hmm? That is, if we want to remember, API slash exams. Okay. <laughs> what we're writing to what we are going to write? app.get path which one slash api slash exams then an arrow, function with an arrow function with a request and response now notice that we can write these are two parameters hmm? One, the first one representing the request, and the second one representing the response. But they can have whatever name you want in your code. You can call it a rec and res. You can call it a request a response. Hmm? They are the same. We should. And so we are Yes, that's the one option. Hmm? So. Well, yes, or use the promises in any, in any case. Because if you remember, all these methods return a new promise. 
So we need to handle the promise in some way. So we can handle with then and catch, etc., or we can handle with a sync and a wait. Pick one. Maybe we can have two APIs with two different examples so that we we're, 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 we do our cap also for, for that part. So let's not use here a sync and a wait. Let's use it then so that it's. Um, what we're going to do here? We are in the body of the, of the function. So what we are going to do here? We get the exam from the database. OK. So let's have a look at the database. So the, exams, the database is a module that opens the database and gets all the exams what it does, just to, to remind us. Uh, Return right a new promise. Uh, and does a select asterisk from course join with score because we need all the information uh, and then does it be all and if there is an error send a reject otherwise create a new exam with all the information and send the result of these collections of exams so we'll have a list of exams uh, build according the exams that is the same that we already had in the past code name credits date score and load it with a load that by default if not passed is false that is things we did seven weeks ago more or less okay so we need to access these list exams method so notice that this is a module um, that imports exams clearly and exports all these methods in this way exports dot the methods name so in JavaScript in the browser you do import and export with default, with name import, name export, etc. Here, for imports, we use a require, and for export, we have two ways. The first one, three. The first one is export dot the function, defined as an arrow function this way. The second is, probably I wrote here, this one, export dot what you want to call the export equal the thing you are exporting. That is the same as the other. It's exactly the same as export dot the name of the function. Uh, but export dot the name of the function required a narrow function, and this is not a narrow function. Because it's a, a normal function, named function. So we need to export it after. And we also have, it's not here, but also have export dot modules. exam or we can also have if you have multiple things we can also write in the bracket square this is a module exports this say we are not going to in practice they are very very similar in practice they're the same actually these three methods uh, there is a small difference this is a specific export of just exams this put the exams among all the exports in the modules so in practice, again, they are similar. But if we say that this is, for instance, null, these modules doesn't export anything, not even this line here. So this is the, the only difference. The export modules is about the entire modules. The other one is just exporting one thing. So if we export one thing and say that modules does not export anything, that even this single thing export is not working. But you can use it if you don't do anything like this, you just pick one and use that consistently. So export dot the things you want to export, export dot the arrow function you are going to export, export dot modules, all the modules you want to export. Just one per file, they will work well. So in this case, we just want to export exams since it's one and we can export it directly. 
uh, same things for the DAO. Hmm? We'll export a single error function, one at a time. All of them start with exports. And to import them, we write require, as we did in the past. So here, we need to import DAO, because we need to access to all this method. So const DAO require dot slash DAO, because it's a file in the same folder. Oh, before continuing that, that let's, let's check if everything is working, maybe. So let's write a get on the root. Let's uh, just get a request and response uh, and does uh, rest.send hello. Just to check that everything is working before continuing. Just to check if this is working. So let's run this, nodmon server.js. You see server started at localhost 3001. So if we go here and buy localhost 3001, we see hello here. So at least it's working. So. Let's go back here. We can delete this one since it was just for testing and uncomment this. Uh, notice the logging. Hmm? This get slash 200 is the hello message hmm? that we received. And the browser also asked for a favicon that we don't have in the server. So the server replied automatically for four because we don't have that static resource, the icon of the page. Hmm? Uh, okay, so we said that we need to access the database. Hmm? And so in the database we have the method for getting all exams is called list exams. Hmm? So here we're going to write dot list exams <clears throat> that will get as a promise with an array of object inside and we said we don't we are not going to use a sync and await for now in this first api we're going to use then so dot then what we need to do here in the then We are going to do a resp response dot something for sure, but before promises, remember promises and then and catch. List exams returns a list of exams. We're going to use that with the then. So we're going to write before response dot something. We're going to write the parameters, let's say exams, because it's the list of the exams we received. Pick one name, this is the parameter. Arrow function, and we can send it immediately because it's already a list of objects. We want JavaScript and the exams have all the information that we have in JavaScript, that we have in our API design, the name, the credits, the score, the code, everything. So it's already done. It can be immediately passed as a JSON object, as a genus, a serialized as JSON. Mm -hmm. So response dot JSON exams. Like response 
which status. That's already implicit. Okay? So when you send something or end something or JSON something as a response, it got the 200 status. Always. Because you send something back and it should be the, the something right thing to send back, so it's, it gets the 200 automatically. Mm -hmm. For JSON, send, and end, you don't have to specify. Probably not end. But for JSON send, you, you, you receive 200 for sure. For end, we will need to check after. Um, OK? So this is enough for sending. But then we, we also said that we, what is, we send a 200 in case of success, so in this case. But we also send a 500 if there is an error. Right? So we need to generate a 500 too. This is the 200. We need to have the 500. And since that method reject in case of errors, the method in the DAO reject in case of errors, we have a catch to catch the reject. And that could be hmm, response. dot status, here yes we need status, 500, dot end, in this case. Hmm? Or if you want to have a message together with 500, you can have dot send and send a message. Or dot JSON and send a mes message in JSON format. But you need to prepare the message for what happened. But bare minimum, send the 500. OK, let's save it. And notice that when I save it, the console is writing restarting due to changes. Hmm? So nodmon check. You see nodmon check, that is something change and restart the server. Always. Is it fine? Any question? Any doubts? Yeah. No, it's due to um, laziness uh, because we, so, so Nodemon works for any server you're going to use. Why do we need to install it separately? It actually works for any file you use. So even if you write a, a normal Node.js Node file, with, even without a server, every time you, s you save, it will rerun the file. So it's, it's fine to install globally for, for this reason. So next time, we don't have to install it again. It's more a service utility. Any other question before watching it on a browser? No question? Clearly, cannot get the root. This is the root. It's API slash exams. Hmm? And here we have the JSON file of our exam. Hmm? OK. Is what do you expect? Uh, in the database, we have just two exam pass. One is computer architecture, so the content is correct. We just had to do two exams in the, in the database. There is something strange you notice. Everything's fine. The date. Why we have this date so long? Yeah, because of DJS. Exactly. So since we just get the information from the database, create exams through the JS automatically for each row that we get from the database and send them via JSON immediately, that is the standard serialization of a date for the JS. So we get the standard thing. 
If we want to prevent that, we either don't use the JS in the exam, that's an option, and we keep this as a string forever. In this case, it doesn't change anything because we are not going to manipulate the dates today at least. So using the JS or not doesn't change a lot. We don't need to say is after a certain date, is before a certain date. It could be a string. Or we need to, before sending back the JSON, we need to format the date in a specific way so that the JSON will send out with the correct date. Hmm? So these are the two, two ways to, to proceed. Either get rid of the JS or manipulate line by line, item by item, the array we're going to, um, to use to create. Or we can update the design, say, okay, it's fine. You will also have a, 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 um, a, times, a time in UTC. And it will also be midnight. Not always. 11, 12, it depends. Of the time zones, probably, in that moment. Do you get why one is 11 and the other is 10 p.m.? Because of the delayed saving time. In January, we have UTC plus one. In June, we are in UTC plus two. And so we have two hours more. This is in UTC time, okay? Okay, and this was the first method. Let's do the, let's do the update. Hmm? Uh, just to see, then the ad is very, very similar, but let's do the update. App.put, which is the URL for the update. API slash exams slash and then regress and then our function etc. And we can also write here if you want to put API exams code. like we did in the, in, the, in the document, so that we have a reference to that. So here, we're going to use a sync and a wait, instead of then and catch, so that we have also the other example. <clears throat> how do we, are, how, where are we going to add a sync? Before rec and rest. Exactly. <clears throat> then, what does the update need to do? From where? The request body. So the new information. So in this moment, it's it's we are updating basically all the information from the exams in the score table. So there is no partial update here. Uh, so a const. Uh, exam to update rec.body and that's it that body is already in JSON so the exam to update is already a JavaScript object hmm? uh, 
or let's call it regular to update. Okay. Then what do we need to do? Yeah, we we will do after if we have time. Let's, let's let yeah. We we need to add the data the data validation for sure. But we need also to add the, the middleware for data validation, so it's it's a little bit longer uh, to do it now. But yeah, we need to do that also. Before that, what we need to do? Params to do what? Params is right, but. To get the code, so rec.params.code. And what we are going to do with this code? Yes, we can assume that the code is right. We can do one check if you want. A small check that is checking that this code is the same code that we have in the body. It's a very simple check, right? But I can update a code and send the body of another exam. Since in the body we have the code, we, can, we should at least check that these and these are the same because otherwise, if we pick these, and here there are information about another exams, we are going to update this code with other informations, and vice versa. If we pick this one, and this was different, we're going to update not the exams that is written in the URL, but the exam that is written in the body. So this is at least a check that we can do. If the, the URL, the code in URL is the same as the code in the body. So is that uniquely identified uh, the exam. Hmm? So. We could remove it from the request body if we want, but if the idea, again, is to update the entire object in a way, we, we already did, didn't know because we, we just remove uh, names and et cetera, but we can also keep that for, for the reason to maintain the full resource or forever double check so that, but yes, it's a redundant in this, in this way. We can also consider to remove it for sure. But in the moment we have, so let's continue with, let's follow the design of the API that we had. So if they're actually the same, so there is no mistakes, now we can um, call the methods in the, in the, in the DAO. So DAO.updateExam uh, of exam to update. So the update exam methods get a full exams and will use score, load, date, and code to, um, to update the exams. Hmm? So update the score in the score table since we have separated with setting the new score, the new load, the new date where the course code is the score, the, the code that we pass through. So in this function, we need all the information to the single parameter. But we, we can, if we remove it from inside the exam, we can have a second parameter with the code, for instance, getting from the URL. And this reject again with an error and resolve with the last ID. So the ID of the, of the parameter, the exam that was update. Um, so we update the exams, and if everything go well, we can write res dot res dot everything well. We updated the exam. Status to hundred dot end because otherwise we don't send the request without the dot end with just the status. We set the status, we send the request. Okay, this is if everything go well. If it's not, 
we need to process the error and we said that do we need to await the oh yes do we need to update this to wait this yes for sure um, we say 200 503 422 so the reject will give probably the 500 something so this will be try for the right results and then catch for getting the uh, reject hmm, from the um, database from the database yes catch error hmm. and in this case we can say res dot status we said 503 and here we can for instance write an error just to the json and then we can uh, say error um, database error while updating uh, while updating uh, exempt update dot code for instance In case we have a database error, we can send back the 503 with a message. In this case, we can also add a message. Just, just to have an example, also before we could have had a message hmm, of an error. Uh, given that this is an if, uh, the start here, we also can have here an else. Hmm. That return hmm, rest dot uh, status 503 mm, rest dot status 503 dot uh, again json we can co copy this mm. uh, not database error in this case but we can say wrong code in the request body yes uh, isn't there a load on the same cluster and the same cluster or uh, is there uh, the uh, uh, between uh, the same and the no we no no actually so with a weighted sync, with a weighted in async, the uh, dot then of the promise is just a wait. But if we want to have the dot catch, we need to enclose all of these in a try catch. Because that dot catch is actually this catch here, but this catch here cannot work without the try. And so this is the, the way to handle both the dot then, let's say, and the dot catch. So both the, the resolve and the reject. So this is the proper way with a sing and a way to handle resolve and reject. Okay? Any other question? Okay, so let's try this. Um, I already installed uh, REST client, this one, that doesn't scroll anymore. That allow us to send messages What is an example? Here. 
Say in an editor, type an HTTP request as simple as be below. Hmm? So HTTP example, or with a more complex standard, like including all, post, etc. So let's try the put. Hmm? So we need uh, a file called whatever you want dot HTTP. And here, we need to do the post. So HTTP localhost 3001 exams put exams and let's update computer architecture. Content type application JSON. The body is, let's copy this. And let's fix it. Let's fix it. So, code will be the same. Name and credits, we don't need it. Date, we can keep the same date as before. But let's update the score, let's say 27, and the loader will be the same. And here, we should then keep the server running. I just stop it. And so here, press send request. We receive a 404. Oh, we, it's API. It's a 503. <laughs> but at least, yes. So the error works. Um, <laughs> database error while updating. So, can we close this? Okay. So data bar errors means that here we have some problem. Uh, is everything in the right format? Date, score, load. Date, score, load. Okay. Okay, uh, we will need to, to do a little bit of debug to see what happens, but we, we don't have actually time now. So I will, I will fix it, and we'll write on Slack what, what it was. Probably it's something uh, minimal to, to update. Um, but I will, I will fix it, and I will commit the, the working version on, yeah. Oh, you just, if you install the application, you have just here a send request link. Okay, so I will fix it and put the online the, the right version. Let's say uh, on Thursday, you will start the Big Lab 2, and then next week, we will move back again on React and how to interact between React and Express. Have a nice week. <laughs>